Well hey there, you're on the internet, I hope you'll excuse the background noise, I have construction going in three different directions, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie nib nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now today's ink is by Diamine, here in the 30 milliliter bottle. Come on, camera. Kensington Blue. It's very basic, uh, unassuming blue, it's straightforward not flashy and yet not dull. It's a nice medium. All the tests were done in this Pilot Vanishing Point with a broad nib. Obviously it's not in there anymore. But uh, yeah, that's going to cause some problems. Let's check out the chromatography, which I did multiple times because I was bored. Uh, as you can see, there's this very light blue up at the top and then underneath there's this pink and also kind of a bit of a purple, but uh, yeah, still, as you can see, not much staying power, and a lot of the blue washes off. Let's check out the paper test. Top down in density, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. 20 seconds to dry. Very nice shading, which you get all through the words and in the little scrubby. But uh, for some reason, it was a bit wet in this pen, and uh, I had near bleed in places, which I thought might have been because of the broad nib, which, as you can see, it's nearly there. In fact, it did get through on the water test. But, uh, yeah, as you can see, the water test, a lot of that blue started to wash away and started to dye the paper, and most of it's gone, so... Next is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter where it took 18 seconds to dry. And I feel, again, you get really good shading. It's very pronounced in the writing. I hope that comes through. And again, the water test is not great. What came up is really gone, as you can see there, and uh, dyed the page a bit. And again, I had near bleed through. Okay, so that's the scrubby, but yeah. And again, the water test nearly came through. Something was going on, so, yeah. Next is Tomoe River Paper, where it took 20 seconds to dry, and you get the bearish sheen in the halos in the darkest parts, but I'm, I already know already, so I gotta get it on camera. But I still wanted to show just how pronounced this shading was in the writing, because I feel like it's quite striking here. But, uh... Yeah, again, water test is not great, and even though it didn't bleed through, the echo is significant. So, yeah. Which is odd, because this isn't a terribly uh, terribly dark blue, it's a very medium blue. Next is the 20-pound <laughs> copier paper, where it took three and a half seconds to dry, but as you can see, there is no shading, there is a good deal of feathering, and a lot of spread. Like, if you look at the line here and the line here, I mean, it almost starts to look like a felt tip marker. And uh, here's something interesting about the water test. I hope this comes through on camera, but you can actually see the pinks and the purples in there. But, uh, yeah, not good. It exploded. It feathered. It, it seriously bled. So, yeah, really, I mean, I don't recommend using a broad nib on any copier paper, but this combo seemed extremely bad. Next is me notebook paper, where it took three seconds to dry. You don't really get shading. Uh, it bleeds and it doesn't feather so much as it just gets like extremely woolly to near feathering. And it spread a bit, but not nearly as much as it did on the copier paper. And again, you start to see the pinks and the purples a little bit in the water test, which was bad. Now, considering how cheap and how thin this paper is, I expected much worse, so... And lastly is moleskin paper, which is a disaster. Um, I'm gonna try and get this really close and hold it still, because this is pretty bad. Uh, yeah, as I say, ugly, <laughs> terrible. Look at, look at that feathering. And it's spread a lot. That water test is terrible. It exploded, and yet some parts it's completely gone. It dyed the paper. Yeah, just... Ugh. I mean, look at that. That's really bad. So, uh... 
Yeah, there you go. That's Diamine Kensington Blue. I tried it in a sample and really liked it and decided to get one of the little bottles. Uh, but for some reason the bottle didn't wow me quite as much as the sample did. It's a perfectly good ink, it's decent, it's a nice blue, it's straightforward. It's generally well behaved, which is why I was confused it did so badly, because this is a, a Japanese broad, so it's not, you know, the broad is broad out there. But for some reason, in this pen, it did really, it did really poorly. Uh, not just on the day I did these tests, but in general. So for some reason, it didn't agree with this pen. But otherwise, it's a pretty decent, well-behaved blue, so... For your consideration from the Triple N Network, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Bye.